So this is the presentation on using BGP for QoS. This is at the MUM 2015 here in Miami. So uh, normally I would talk about who I am, but since this is for just my blog, I don't care about that, don't care about those pictures. We're jumping right into the assumptions. So assumptions are that you've either looked at my videos before, the routing ones, or somebody else's. I even did some BGP routing videos before uh, for MUM, I think last year, two years ago, something like that. Um, so you're going to be somewhat familiar with ASNs, autonomous system numbers, peers, uh, creating peers, filters to filter routes. Um, you're also going to need to be familiar with somewhat, to a, a certain degree, QoS and its configuration. So that's going to be address list and IP firewall address list, uh, mangle rules in the firewall as well, and then Q trees, which are how you actually um, uh, apply quality of service to traffic itself. So once you've got it all marked up, QTrees is where all the magic happens. We're still going to go over a little bit of it as we go. So what is BGP? It's Border Gateway Protocol. It's basically the dynamic routing protocol that runs the internet. So it's uh, pretty amazing stuff. Um, I work with it just about every day. Um, I actually get kind of excited when I talk about it a lot of times uh, because I can make uh, an adjustment to BGP here and I can watch that propagate across the world. So it's pretty cool to think that uh, you know you can actively change the world at will. And I don't know a whole lot of people that can do that, aside from people like ourselves. Um, so in this BGP uh, configuration, we're going to be doing route manipulation. So uh, basically, um, using filters, we can um, manipulate how many routes come in and out. Or from your ISP, there's usually three options. Um, it's to accept all routes from them. They'll send you partial routes. They'll send you default route, or honestly, they'll send you a combination of, of one of those three. Um, so our router actually gets the full internet route table, but um, for the guys of this configuration and, and usually normal operation, you don't truly need the full internet route table. So the smallest an ISP will send you is a slash 24. So uh, right now, from my upstream peers, you're looking at about 550,000 routes, somewhere in that neighborhood. Um, but if you cut out slash 24 and smaller, which they're really only going to be sending you slash 24 and larger, um, it cuts down your route tables significantly, in about in half. So it ends up to be in about 240,000 routes. Um, and you can see also here we've got a peer that's considered OpenIX, and that's for Open Internet Exchange. So we're going to be doing a little bit of examples of what uh, an open internet exchange uh, route manipulation, kind of quality of service manipulation rather, uh, would look like. Um, so what is an OIX? It's usually a shared infrastructure at a data center somewhere uh, that multiple organizations plug into and they all peer with each other over it. So not necessarily is it a one-to-one -one peer. So if you have 100 people, you don't always peer with 100 people on that exchange. Normally. In those situations, there'll be a couple of route servers, and everybody will peer those route servers. So uh, you'll still get everybody's routes that they want to send out. It's just all manipulated to the route servers. It just keeps things simpler. Generally, there's no charge, um, so you're not having to to pay all of the people on the OIX you're you're getting your configuration from, or rather your routes from. You will, however, uh, have to pay the organization that's handing you the wire. That's almost the certainty. Um, unless you're one of the big providers that they just want to get on there. Um, it's usually uh, geographic distribution, so just kind of covering this geographic area that you happen to be in. So a lot of times there'll be content providers on there like Netflix or uh, CDNs, content delivery networks like uh, Cloudflare or Akami or uh, Limelight, somebody like that. So the steps we're about to go through, we're going to set up some route filters, uh, create them, apply them, and then verify them. So, uh, route filters for uh, this configuration. Let me switch to that laser pointer. Here you go. Uh, you've got the ISP routes coming in, and we're going to be doing some filtering. Normally, you're going to uh, block RFC 1918. In this case, we'd be blocking slash 24s, and then what we're really going to be showing in this example is allowing and uh, kind of route marking uh, these special routes. Not with a route mark, but with a comment, actually. And then everything else we're just going to allow in unchanged. Um, 
and then outbound normally you'd say uh, just allow my individual addressing out um, in this example though uh, since I'm just using test routers um, uh, paired with uh, with gateways that I can get full routes I'm actually sending nothing in you know he's not really routing packets he's just used for this example so route filters uh, it's in routing filters you can put them in there you can match a lot of different various BGP attributes uh, the really this is for any dynamic routing protocols um, you can also match the prefix the prefix length OSPF type there's a, a large number of things you can actually match you can do simple actions like allow the route through or reject it or uh, you can do something more complex like change the next hop, set the distance for the administrative distance or um, you can also set uh, BGP prepending or communities or all kinds of interesting things like that um, route filters uh, in this example there's going to be um, four really um, and uh, three of them are going to be using um, uh, BGP AS path matching so we're going to do um, the autonomous system paths so um, in uh, BGP it's considered a path vector uh, protocol so normally you're looking at route to route so you're hopping router to router to router that's going to be OSPF right like or or RIP or EIGRP or any of those internal routing protocols they look router to router whereas OSP or rather BGP looks at autonomous system to autonomous system kind of a large uh, conglomeration of routers to routers right just these big systems and so uh, we're gonna look at origin so we want to see what routes are sourced from say twitch.tv and this is their AS number uh, 46489 and so we're using uh, regex matching over here on this guy um, so the caret basically means the start of the AS path period asterisk means any number of characters uh, the comma and then uh, the source uh, AS system and then uh, finally the dollar sign which means the end so when AS path is, is built and created it starts here and then every subsequent hop adds over on the left uh, so we're going to be doing that for like say Twitch and Voodoo and then our open internet exchange is actually going to do it via BGP communities and those are just um, sort of like strings they're transitive attributes they're not mandatory but they're attached to NLRI as it goes through and you can uh, use it just for informational purposes or you can actually use it to manipulate your traffic via the filters so um, here's our uh, route filter actually being uh, built as you can see right here it's got the uh, the name of the route filter we're calling it BGPQOSN here's the AS path in the BGP tab uh, again, we've already talked about that guy. Action is pass through, pass through, so this means it's going to accept whatever we're doing to it and then pass it on through. So if it gets matched by another set of uh, route filters, it could theoretically overwrite what's already here, but it allows it to, to keep going through. Uh, if you wanted to, you could set it to accept and it would just stop right here. But you can see our action, um, uh, our real action right down here is set route comment, RC streaming video. So this is where our magic is happening right so whenever this route moves through the filter it's actually going to have this comment applied for it, applied to it um, as it's being put into the uh, the forwarding information that you know the, the the rib and into the routing table it's going to have this route comment attached to it uh, so whenever you're going to apply a filter <coughs> in this instance it's going to be our peer uh, ISP whenever you put uh, it in the in filter or the out filter you know whichever filter you're updating obviously this is incoming because it's routes coming from our peer this is what we're trying to manipulate whenever you apply it for the first time it actually resets that peer so the peer is going to go down um, and then it's going to reestablish and all those routes are going to come back in so it is service affecting uh, FYI and then also remember that once you already have this in filter in place if you make changes to that filter it doesn't drop the peer but what it does is it invalidates all those routes momentarily and then runs them all back through the updated filter and then they're, you know they're good in the table again so it's it's obviously uh, less affecting and much faster 
than um, uh, just adding and removing it but uh, it's still going to be somewhat affecting your CPU is going to spike when all that happens so route verification we've got it in there for the twitch uh, so those routes are coming in they're moving through that filter they're getting the route count comment attached to them uh, and you can see it right here this is just uh, a print detail on the um, the the route table itself and as you can see it's got RC streaming video applied to it because it was sourced from a very specific uh, AS number right there and then we're also going to do the same for the uh, open exchange the open IX so we uh, put it in the same chain and it's just you know somewhere down the line over here in the BGP tab instead of matching on the AS path we're matching on this so um, the open exchange when it's passing routes to us attaches these communities to it 65101 10 so we're just basically saying anything that has that go ahead and action pass through and market RC OIX so that you know it comes from the Internet Exchange we're also whether this isn't particularly uh, germane to this configuration but it's just a of, of note I actually adjusted the local preference for all the traffic coming from the open exchange since it's going to be a preferred path we want all of our routes to go that way um, because it's obviously going to be cheaper too so by default local preference is at 100 if you set it to 110 it's going to be preferred uh, so all of our traffic will head that way anyway so here's the route verification for our open exchange um, traffic you can see it's got uh, RCOIX right there as the uh, the route comment. If you look down here under BGP communities, you can see that that route actually has the BGP uh, community attached as well. So uh, next next steps are going to be to take a look at the QoS script, create it, explain it, verify, and schedule it. So here's the script. I'm not going to bother showing it because uh, it's available for download on my website right now. Um, and it's a lot to look at and confusing anyway. Although it's not very long. It's only what is that, 20 lines long or something. So in a nutshell, what it does is it loops through the routing table. Um, and so if your routing table is huge, it's going to take a little bit longer. But we're only at about 250,000 routes, so it's not so bad. Uh, so it loops through the routing table looking for any routes that have... Uh, that start, have a route comment first and then uh, it makes sure that route comment starts with capital R capital C. If it does that's a match and so it's going to try and create an address list for uh, that destination route. So if the destination is 1.1.1.1 and the route comment is RC streaming video it'll create an address list entry called stream, RC streaming video uh, with 1.1.1.1 as the address in there. So if it's a subnet, it'll add the subnet uh, slash notation, all that good stuff on there. Um, now, if that entry already exists, the first thing it does is it removes it and then we'll add this new one in. Uh, the script by default in a script, if uh, you try and add an address list entry that already exists, it, um, it the script fails and it stops right there. So we have to try and remove them first. Um, and it doesn't add a significant amount of time to the script, maybe a second or two. So it's, it's really efficient, really fast. And uh, also, whenever it adds the entries, it adds them in with uh, a timeout of 24 and a half hours. So 24 hours and 30 minutes. Um, the idea there is you schedule this guy to run every 24 hours, and uh, the entries will time out in a half hour if new ones haven't been introduced. So running our script, I tried it first on a dual 3.5 Xeon, took about 75 seconds to run and the Prox went to about 80% utilization, which is fairly high. Um, then I did it on a quad 3 gigahertz Xeon system and it took about 45 seconds to run and CPUs average about 40% um, whenever it's running. So that's not so bad. So I ended up continuing my testing on the, the quad 3 gigahertz Xeon. And here's a quick run through only a crazy person actually uh, does this live so here's some videos of it so this is the quad core 3 gig you see the, the individual CPUs there here's our route table 240,000 you can see the route comment on this route so uh, the filters have already uh, gone through and then we're about to fire off the script <coughs> you can see it started at 37 seconds there see the proc topping out 
and then up here in the address list you can see the script is actually starting to pick up some of our entries there you go they're starting to build little by little and you can see they have one day and 30 minutes so that's 24 and a half hours being built up you see some of the YouTube some of the twitch and these were just fun AS numbers I went out and grabbed us to see so you see the script stop that was actually only about a 37 second run that wasn't too bad so they're all in there uh, all of our dressing as you can see there's all these slash notations in there so they are true subnets and now we're almost at 38 seconds I'm gonna wait just a second and then run it so you can get an idea there it goes fires off you can see the CPU pop up it's starting to crunch and so you can see that it's going through slowly and replacing the old entries in there and again there's a single line in here that it says hey if this entry exists go ahead and remove it first and then go ahead and uh, create recreate the entry so that happens so fast that there's not really a lapse in your QoS and your matching or anything like that. So yep, there's the new ones updated. And this one again takes probably about 45 seconds to run and complete all the way through. So now once we verify that it's actually working, we can go ahead and uh, create a scheduled uh, schedule for this script. So this guy, we had him set to run every 24 hours again because uh, it's 24 hours and 30 minutes and so that way they'll time out adequately if uh, if they haven't been uh, re-advertised via those peers and um, since there is a bit of a CPU impact you want to run it at um, kind of a non-peak time and so I picked 4 a.m. which is a pretty good uh, pretty good time frame for us it's always dead at 4 a.m. and then it just kicks off the BGP QoS script next steps just reviewing the address list and uh, kind of getting a feel for how they work there. Um, so as you can see, we have uh, some entries in here for the open exchange, the streaming video. So theoretically, if you wanted to uh, add some additional subnets in here on your own without having to use the route filters, you would just add the address list entry and name it RC streaming video or RCOIX and it will go ahead and get popped later in our um, configurations. So you don't necessarily have to add like a static route uh, with a route comment. You could do that and your script would grab it or you could just come in here and just statically add the entry. It seems a little bit easier to actually just add the address list entry. Um, so now what can we do this? Uh, do with this information? Address lists are great for filter rules, NAT rules, mangle rules. You can do lots of different weird things with them. Uh, for us, we're just going to be doing some pretty plain Jane uh, vanilla QoS. So we're going to use mangle to classify the traffic and then later we'll pop them in the queues. So we'll show the, uh, the mangle rules being created here. So with the open exchange, we kind of talked about uh, the concept of altering the QoS, but what would be an interesting scenario where you'd want to do that? <clears throat> Theoretically, you could sell a customer and say, look, you get a 10 megabit rate limit to the internet. So all of your internet traffic, 10 megabit rate limit. But if you happen to be traversing to any of our connections on the open exchange, we'll actually let you go through with no rate limit. So all the open exchange stuff wide open. Um, and so since we are classifying the open exchange traffic, we can actually do that using mangle rules and queues. So um, we are going to first be connection marking anything going to our destinations for OIX and then we'll packet mark it. And the same thing with streaming video right here. So pre-routing chain, anything destined to address list RC OIX, which is what gets popped on the uh, address list from the route table uh, connection market OIX pass it through and then you've got in interface for incoming traffic and you've got uh, nothing uh, specified beyond that for outgoing uh, as long as it's got the uh, connection mark and then it's gonna attach those packet marks ingoing and outgoing very similar for twitch only uh, different names
that's pretty much it. Connection mark and then mark it in, mark it out. Now we're going over to the Q trees, uh, the creation of those. So I have kind of a default QoS script I use and it's up on my blog that you can take a look at. But in here we actually added the OIX in and out entries right there. So you can see this is normal traffic, it's going to get caught in here and all the OIX will bypass over here over to the side. Uh, here's our Qtree entry for OIX in, pack a mark in, OIX out, pack a mark out. Pretty straightforward. Now time for some verification when you actually see this stuff in use. So I started a ping from uh, one of the internal hosts going to something on the open exchange. You can see here with a, a torch that uh, we've got that traffic moving through. So looking at the connection mark and the connection packets, you can see that they're all zero right there. We're going to move down to here for connections. You can see that it's got admin set as the uh, connection mark right now. All right, our CPU's popping up, <clears throat> so that the script's running. So currently there are no addressless entries, but they're going to start building right now. And we're watching over here on the Q tree as well. Q tree was actually empty, it just went too fast. There it is. So you can see it start to, to pick up routes and then to, to move through. And then uh, here's our Twitch testing. So let's check out some of this. Um, as you see the address list were empty so we're going to go ahead and fire off the script because this takes it actually a minute to start building before uh, the twitch traffic's at the top of the route table so it takes a little while so you can see connections we have those there with no connection marks you can see the streaming video stuff here with no packets hitting uh, here's the mangle rule again destination address is uh, source streaming video we're just looking for all the TCP traffic heading that direction Right, there you are, there's streaming video. It's actually starting to get hit. Again, there was another double check. I don't think it was getting hit yet. It's just me jumping around because I'm impatient. And there you go, streaming. You can see the streaming video connection mark just got popped on that because the address list finally built. So if we go over to Mangle, Mangle is actually being filled out and then streaming video, you can see it actually is hitting packets there. So it's working. So in a nutshell, you can see that uh, it, it's kind of an interesting roundabout way to do all of this stuff, but um, it gives you a lot of power so you can start really manipulating traffic based on where it comes from in your QoS. So really once you get into an address list you can do anything you want with it. And so it's actually kind of a pretty neat quality of service product. Uh, one last thing is come by, shake my hands if you're at the mums. I'm assuming you guys aren't watching this because you're watching it over the internet. Uh, but if you do, appreciate it. And then in the end of the slides, just a few links to all the good stuff and that's it. Thanks, guys.